Well, here's my 2003 Crown Victoria, and one day it just would not start. And I uh, sprayed starting ether in, into the, uh, the intake, and boom, it started right up for a second until the ether ran out. So uh, I scanned the, the ODB uh, code, and I got P1237, which indicates secondary failure of the fuel pump driver module. Here we are in the trunk of the car, and if we pull back over here, we can see we've got our switch here that for, for the impact, and there's a reset on there. If you're ever in an accident, you need to reset that. And here is our fuel pump driver module. To take the cable out of the fuel pump driver module, you can see there's a little tab right, right there, and you press it, and that's the lock. Okay, we know the problem is either the fuel pump driver module or the fuel pump itself. The way we diagnose this is we bypass the fuel pump driver module and jumper it to make it to where all the power goes to the fuel pump. And if the car doesn't start, then we know it's the fuel pump. So you can see I jumpered uh, the pink wire and the white wire. It's the top row there. And then on the other side, we got the black wire and the brown wire. You see the brown wire with the white stripe and the black wire are jumpered together. And I used a 14 gauge wire, jumper that up there. When you turn the key, uh, see where the car starts. Here's where the fuel pump resides. You can kind of see it looks pretty uh, pretty good and clean. And the only thing is, is there's a, the exhaust pipe right here. And you know, it doesn't look bad. It looks like I could possibly get this thing up move it over and get it out without even touching the exhaust pipe but you know I go looking on uh, on some of these other videos of people doing this and they uh, either a removed a couple of uh, strap hangers to move this thing over uh, an extra inch or so to give a little more clearance or B just took a, a, a ratchet strap and stra uh, and strapped the thing over to the to the wheel to, to just force it out of the way without doing the and just using the uh, the rubber hangers uh, give to, to give access some room here. Strap and put it out along the exhaust pipe. And I pushed my feet and pulled the strap tight. And you can see that it's given us an extra, maybe uh, three quarters of an inch of uh, clearance. So I should be able to get it out with that. These bolts come out very easily with just a like an eight millimeter uh, ratchet. I took out the bolts, gently pried this thing up, it came loose and it's a little difficult getting it out and the main thing that seems to be holding up is this cable right here that goes up on top of the gas tank it seems to be very very tight here's the high quality parts fuel assembly i purchased uh, this one says uh, eccpp and uh anyway it's got the center unit it looks like it needs to be some assembly required got the cables and everything came with some gaskets and two clips. I noticed it already had the gasket in it, so it's uh, like maybe I got an extra gasket. Let's see the new fuel pump assembly. And I guess uh, this is where the, the sender unit arm would go. Now I also, as a, like a plan B, got another cheaper one that doesn't have the sender unit. Because I wasn't too sure whether I was going to just try to assemble it up in the car without taking everything out and not cutting all, or re trying to reroute all the wires and everything. I thought that might be a lot easier if I could do it that way. I, I don't think this plan is going to come through there because I can't really pull the assembly uh, out very well because of the wire tucked underneath the top. But uh, it looks like I'm not going to be using this plan, but you can kind of see it's got two, two uh, things here, this, that, a pump, gasket, and uh, the little bag that goes on the bottom. Looking at the, the replacement unit a little bit more, this is the, the cable that goes along the top, one I'm having trouble with. We can see it comes up about uh, 10 or 11 inches, has a, a clip that seems to something be a clip like that. And then it goes up a little bit further, has that kind of a clip. And then we've got our connector. You can see there's a locking tab on the top that you'd have to press down with your thumb, and it's pretty stiff. It's gonna take a lot of pressure, and I'm gonna to have to try to get on top of the fuel tank and unclip the, 
the factory one and then replace it with the this one got the car jacked up the the wheels hanging down let's go take a look in here and hopefully you can see what's going on here's the the cable the long cable that goes along and it could the clip is or the the connectors right up here on the top and then the first little clip is right right there so anyway uh, my my mission is to undo that little clip and get that thing free and then I can just cut the wire at the gas tank because I have a new sender unit. Okay, oh man, I finally got that stupid thing off. Well, getting this cable off was no picnic. It was uh, took me, a, like I say, a long, long time to get this stupid thing off. And here's the trick. Like, I, I had like a nut pick. I was trying some other tools, but this one worked pretty well. Got the nut pick and managed to jam it on in there. Managed to jam it on in there, pull on the tab, and then I could grab this thing and wiggle it back and forth and finally get it out. But uh, it was an, an hour long job. And oh, I started to think maybe it'd be easier to take the, the gas tank or drop the gas tank. Okay, now that I connect, disconnected the connector on the top, I can just cut these lines because uh, it's gonna be a lot easier. Okay, here's a tool I got here. It's fairly cheap. It looks like the one I'm gonna need is this light blue one that says three-eighths of an inch. Okay, there's our coupler. And uh, I have a, a drain pan underneath it. So I'm going to... Uh, I've already kind of twisted the fuel line to make sure that it's not stuck. And I'm going to push on the fuel line, push on the blue thing, and then uh, disconnect the, the fuel line. But it's a two-hand job, so I have to put the camera down. What a disaster! These cheap piece of junk plastic tools, it did not work. I mean, I spent more than an hour and it did not work at all. And I'm gonna take the advice from the video from my, I think it's 50s kid, where he says you need a metal tool. And I got this one, it was like, you know, less than $8. And it looks like a nice solid metal tool. And uh, like I say, it's uh, three eighths of an inch is the size I need. So anyway, uh, I got my fingers crossed. Well, the fuel line is disconnected using the new uh, metal tool. And the most important thing was more pulling than pushing. Of course, you, you want to like have one hand grasp up here with your thumb. You're pushing like crazy. But the real thing is, is you have to really pull like a maniac on the, on the flexible uh, fuel line to get it off. That's uh, where the, you need to concentrate. And now we can see our final cable. It's this one that goes up here. And it goes up on top of this black piece of metal. And I'm touching the connector with my finger right here. But I'm going to have to reach up here and disconnect the, disconnect the lock and unsnap that baby. Okay, success. We got the old unit out. And I just thought I'd point. So when I reached up underneath there, this connector was pointed towards the front of the car. You just kind of get a little thumb in there and you just wiggle it and pull. And sometimes the wiggling is more important to kind of like break the stuck uh, seal, you know, get it a little, a little bit freed. And uh, this baby came out, I, I took it up over top of the differential, but you probably could have gotten it down uh, behind the differential too, but it seemed to come out pretty easily going over the top. Just wanted to show you the, uh, the difference between the original, the nice, uh, nice, metal, nice hose, metal hose here, nicely enclosed, this thing's, uh, much cheaper looking. Got a little plastic hose, but I'm sure everything will work. And then here's the float. And basically it looks like this float will snap or, or go in the center thing, and then snap in these two clips. Everything's put back in. And since I'm not routing above the fuel tank, I'm right on above the, along the bottom of the car. See they have one of those little metal clips. Uh, it's not too, uh, too good. That clip's not going to stay there, but I put some uh, uh, cable ties, those nylon cable ties, put it one up here, one up there. I'm going to put them all on because we don't want these cables to come down and hit the exhaust. Sure to take the old cable and give it a good pull and rip it on out of there. For a second there I was trying to connect the old connector to the, the, connect, uh, to the connector and that would have been a disaster. Just another shot to show what it looks like on in there when it's all connected and pushing until it snaps. She started right up, only took a few seconds, 
but you, you see we got the check engine light on here so I got my ODB scanner in here and uh, we got to clear all the codes and it says we got one uh, fault pending one two three seven okay so now we're gonna scroll down erase race yes race done oops scan well anyway uh, the check engine lights off so uh, success <laughs> <laughs>